Hi, hi. This is part one of a three part lecture snippets for calculation of electric field using integration. Because one of the purpose of this video is to show you how difficult it is to calculate electric field by integration, especially compared to Gauss's law. Uh, I am going to present a mostly unedited video. I will edit it to um, cut down on some time wasted on writing titles and whatnot. But otherwise, you will see the full length of it so that you can see how long it takes to properly integrate an extended charge distribution to calculate electric field. So with that, uh, let me start with the part one. This will be for calculating the electric field due to an infinitely long line of charge. Okay, to set up the problem, I have an infinitely long line of charge with a linear charge density lambda. And the question is, what is the electric field at some point distance d away? So what is the electric field at this point? So Coulomb's law tells you the electric field due to a point charge distribution. Let me write it down. Coulomb's law says electric field due to a point charge is equal to K times the amount of charge in the point charge divided by distance squared. And electric field is a vector quantity. So there's r hat indicating the direction away from the point charge. You might have seen the version of Coulomb's law that describes the force. So this one describes the force divided out by the charge of the test charge. So the difficulty here is that Coulomb's law is for a point charge, but we have an extended charge distribution. The way we handle things like this in physics is we break up the problem. We can imagine breaking up this long charge distribution into very tiny pieces. Let me draw a representative piece here. So for this small tiny piece uh, within these two red bars, call that the length dy. So for this small amount of charge, we can treat it like a point charge and use Coulomb's law. So let's figure out the contribution to the total electric field due to this small portion of the overall charge. So we should start carefully with the direction of electric field. From the source, the small section of the wire, uh, through the point, and uh, radially outward. So the small contribution, dE, to the electric field from the small section of the wire will look like this. So we can we use Coulomb's law for this small contribution here. It should be equal to the constant K times the small amount of charge. Here it's going to be the charge density times the small length of the charge. So it'll be lambda dy divided by the distance. Here, this distance can be expressed in terms of the two parameters. Uh, let me define the y explicitly now. So this is the line along which y is equal to 0. So the position where the charge is, is at a height y. The other leg of this right triangle is d. So the hypotenuse, the length will be square root of y squared plus d squared. So we take this divided by distance squared. So this will be y squared plus d squared. 
Now, this uh, and expression as it stands here is not right. It's only expressing the magnitude, but electric field is a vector. And because this vector direction will change, as we consider different portions of the wire, it's important that we um, fully express it as a vector. So to do that, I have to essentially write in what the expression for the r hat vector, this r hat vector is. And without going into long explanation, I'll just write in what r hat vector is here. It's going to be cosine theta x hat plus sine theta y hat. Um, so this is um, for if you define the axis this way, the way you would have guessed before I told you how I defined my axis, x and y. And the theta would be uh, this angle here. which is the same theta as this angle here. Now, I can't quite leave my answer in terms of cosine and sine theta because this will make the integration difficult. I want the integration to be in terms of the variable y, variable y, and um, theta is something that depends on y, so I have to rewrite it in terms of y. To do that, one technique that you can use is a technique called drawing the triangle. So it's this triangle that I want you to focus on. So it's what it sounds like. We draw the triangle. Let me copy down a representation of that triangle here. with the angle theta as marked here. Now, we know some things about this triangle. This leg is y, this leg is d, which means, oh, we figured out the hypotenuse already. It's a square root of y squared plus d squared. So this is a triangle which defines angle theta and which has all the sides we need to know to calculate sine and cosine theta. To calculate sine, it will be opposite over the hypotenuse. For cosine, it will be adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this technique allows you to rewrite expressions like cosine theta and sine theta into the algebraic form that is more convenient for future calculation. So this technique is called drawing the triangle. Um, it's a useful technique to know because you'll probably use it in the future. Um, so let me write out the version of infinitesimal contribution DE that has these terms cosine and sine theta written out. So the infinitesimal contribution DE is given by K lambda dy over y squared plus d squared times, so cosine theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, d over square root of y squared plus d squared, there's still x set here, plus the sine theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. y over square root of y squared plus d squared. Also y hat here. So to get the electric field, the total electric field, what you would need to do is take this expression and integrate it over the entire line. When you do that, you'll get the total electric field with the contributions from every segment of that wire. So you are going to be integrating with respect to y, that's your parameter. 
So that will go from y equals negative infinity, it's a very long line of charge, to y equals positive infinity. So we are going to do this integral in the next step, but I want you to pay attention to the terms here and realize that one of these terms will disappear in the integral. It's this term here. When you look at the y function that's represented by this term here, that would be y divided by this times this, or writing it out, it'll be y over y squared plus d squared raised to the power of 3 half. This is an odd function. And because it's an odd function, over the symmetric integral, it'll vanish. So pictorially, this is what it looks like. So I'm going to just draw a rough sketch, and then I'll erase it for space. So the combined graph of y over the denominator, it might look something like this. The important part here is that this looks like a mirror image. So when you integrate from some negative value to the positive value of the same magnitude, the area here, which is a negative uh, contribution to the integral, cancels out the area here, which is the positive contribution to the integral. So um, this doesn't change when the integral is from negative infinity to positive infinity. So over that whole integral, this term will go to zero. So we'll make it zero and not bother with the remainder of the calculation there. And this, by the way, is, could also be shown by a result of pairwise cancellation. So this, uh, this is the y component of the term. I hope you have an intuitive feel that when we get the total electric field here, it will be pointing radially outward, directly away from the line. And that, uh, this result is confirming that intuition. All right, let's do the integral of the remaining term. So let me erase some of the boards to get some space. And write out, since I'm dealing with the x component, the x component of the electric field is equal to the integral that we have written, integral from y equals negative infinity to infinity k lambda d dy over y squared plus d squared raised to power of 3 halves. Anybody here know how to do this integral? This is actually not an easy integral. Comes down to u substitution won't work. You have to do trick substitution. Um, so this is what I'm going to pretend. We are going to pretend that we have an access to integral table. Or um, in the more true sense, I'm going to use Wolfram Alpha. So let me do the rest of the simplifications here. I'm going to factor out all the constant terms. So with that, I have k lambda d times the integral y equals negative infinity to infinity dy over y squared plus d squared 3 half. All right, let me switch to all from alpha and finish this calculation. All right, so we are going to use Wolfram Alpha as an integral table. We are going to look up what the antiderivative of um, dy over y squared plus d squared raised to the power of 3 halves is. So integrate um, dy, so that's just 1 over y squared plus d squared raised to the power of 3 halves with respect to y to make sure it Wolfram Alpha understands us correctly. All right, double check the input as interpreted by Wolfram Alpha. 
that's the correct input. So, all right, the, the, so the antiderivative is y over d squared, square root of d squared plus y squared. All right, I'm going to copy this as image to save it into my board. All right, that's so tiny, but I think I can barely read it. So let me <laughs> finish this calculation. Um, so all of this is equal to k lambda d times the antiderivative y over d squared times square root of d squared plus y squared. All right. It's evaluated from y equals negative infinity to infinity. But let me be uh, formally more correct and go through that extra step. So let me move this board up a little bit and finish the calculation. So I'm going to um, be careful with my notations. So this is going to be equal to k lambda d times, and I'm going to use the limit notation. So limit of, um, let me use the letter L. Um, so L going to infinity. And I'm going to say that the limit is from minus L to L. In that case, the um, numerator will be L minus minus L. So numerator will become 2L. And I can do this because the denominator will be same between the upper and the lower end. It's Y squared, so it doesn't change. So D squared times the square root of D squared plus L squared. All right, so we need to take this limit. So when you're taking limit, you imagine which terms you can start to ignore as one variable goes to zero or infinity. So here, as L becomes arbitrarily large, in this term, D squared term becomes less and less important. So we can say within that limit, D squared term goes to zero. So I have square root of L squared here, which means it's just L. Oh, so that would actually cancel out with the L on top, which is good because L is an arbitrary parameter here. I don't want it in my final answer. So all of this cancels out. So I get, after taking the limit, 2 over D squared. Now there's this D here. So that cancels out a factor of D. So I end up with X component of electric field is 2 times k lambda over d. This is a surprisingly simple result. This is equal to the magnitude of the electric field. But it took a lot of work to get here. We had to, there was even an integral that a lot of us would get lost if we were simply faced with it in the exam. Um, so that's why we are covering Gauss's law. You will see that with the Gauss's law, how much easier this problem is. So once again, this is the part one of the three part lecture snippet on illustrating calculation of electric field using integration strategy. And really the point here is that by comparison to show how much more difficult it is than using Gauss's law. So until next snippet, bye.